Welcome back. Every region has its hidden history. Stories not many know about and often offer up surprises once they're told. Grand Rapids, too, has a hidden history. Todd sat down with local author and archivist for the city of Grand Rapids, Matthew Ellis, to learn about some of those stories. We are in the uh, city archives, the Grand Rapids City Archives and Records Center. Um, and this is where all the, pretty much all the history is of, of the city. Here is where all of the city government records are kept, uh, going back to uh, 1838 with the very founding of the village of Grand Rapids, up to the 1870s with the construction of the first bridges. We get about uh, 1,300 to 1,500 uh, people a year requesting records, and mostly it's property things. People want to see what their house looked like in the 1830s or 1930s and, and such. They want the, the historical perspective on, on past city projects, and when, when they're doing big uh, revitalization projects, um, there's always talks about revitalizing Calder Plaza, and they come and see why was Calder Plaza placed here, what's the significance of this location, and so we can provide that historical narrative. So 1838 is when the village was founded. There was actually like kind of two competing villages. There was the village of Kent, which was kind of started by Lucius Lyon, and then the village of Grand Rapids, which was spearheaded by Louis Campau. Um, Lucius Lyon was the first kind of big surveyor that came to the city. There was a few other smaller surveyors, um, but he surveyed what would become Grand Rapids, and so he was able to see where the best land was, where the kind of natural materials were, and he bought the land above Louis Campau and below Louis Campau. And so the the historical myths have always said that they were they really didn't like each other, and and some of that's true. We have correspondence from from Lucius Lyon where he's like, oh, Louis Campau is just an argumentative Frenchman, um, and so some of that kind of humorous, going back and forth between them. And, and it was just a few days um, after the village of Grand Rapids paperwork was filed that Lyon was uh, trying to file his paperwork. So in a matter of three days, we could have been Kent City or something like that. We have a mugshot book, um, 1928 to 34, and it covers like fascinating topics in history: prohibition, the Great Depression, um, and the the storied tales in that these mugshots portray are just they're just so interesting. So I, I found a guy named Arnold Adams who was arrested for conspiracy, and that's all it said on his record. And I was I was like, what kind of conspiracy? And so I dug a little deeper and I found his turnkey record that shows like when he was arrested. So it turns out that he had stolen a vehicle and was arrested for the theft of the vehicle. And that showed up in his court records. And so I was able to compare that to some newspaper articles I found. And it turns out that the car that he had stolen belonged to a guy, but the guy was in on it. And he was trying to cash in on an insurance policy on the car. And so they were kind of in cahoots. But then the police, of course, found out and both were arrested. Um, but it turns out he wasn't too smart because the insurance policy would have only covered the, the rest of the payments he had on the car. We have a collection of Sanborn maps that show uh, where buildings are laid out. And so we have a section uh, or a set of maps from the 1870s, uh, the 18, uh, 1890s, 1913, and then all the way up to 1950s. And Sanborn maps are still used today by, by construction industries. We have um, some of the planning drawings for when they put in the dams in the Grand River. Um, we have the documents and contracts for who they hired to remove some of the rapids. So they removed like hundreds of tons of rubble from the river. They did what was called scalping the river, where they would just take off levels on the riverbed. And they, they ended up putting quite a lot of it in people's backyards, 
because um, people used to live on the en ed ed um, edges of the river, and so they would just pile it in their backyards and they would get really mad. And My first book, Hidden History of Grand Rapids, um, it kind of delves into all these topics, anything from the history of dogs in the city with the sled dog racing, to the history of food in the city, early, early grocers. We had what was called a king grape with a, a grape, wine grape variety um, that was discovered here. Um, so all of these fascinating topics, lost art, you know, it, it covers a, a large swath of the city's history.